and made it to Camille's bungalow. And the door is right open, so I'm gonna go right in. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Are you boomeranging me and I'm boomeranging you? <laughs> I'm Camille, and I have an obsession. I stay up late at night reading cookbooks. I imagine that the author is my best friend, who I cook with and ask a million questions. And this show is my chance to do that in real life. We're going into the kitchen to get to know the people behind my favorite cookbooks to talk life, talk food, and cook from their book. So Daphne is a real life friend. So of course I wanted to see her, but I also have a major girl crush on her and I'm constantly looking for any excuse to hang out. I'm so excited to cook from one of my favorite cookbooks, The Happy Cook, which I feel like perfectly sums up Daphne herself. Oh, thank you. So Daphne, you're in charge. Put me to work uh -oh. on this cauliflower and zucchini orchiata that looks so yes. delish. First things first, I'm like on a cauliflower tear right now. I feel like kale has had its time. Mm -hmm. I still love kale. No, I'm not cheating on kale, but I do. I you know do what love I actually made last night? What? I made the lentil and cauliflower porridge. Yes. Okay, can we and talk about that? And just served it that? with like a simple salad. It was so good. My two year old downed it. Yes, right? Your kids loved it because it has that sweet, it has the sweetness from the uh, sweet potato and the carrots and the yeah. mix. It's just, it's a 15 minute meal, you know? Right. It's really something very simple and casual. I just feel like. We have to get back to that point where it's, you don't have to try that hard, you know what I mean? Right. Everyone's busy, it just has to be something simple. Five minutes in her presence, she's so sweet and approachable, you kind of forgot that she's a network TV star and also Dr. Oz's daughter. Drizzle it. <laughs> I love some cauliflower. I went ahead and sliced it into these kind of long flat yeah, pieces. Yeah, I love that. Because we're gonna get more surface area for deep yeah. dark golden brown, almost fried oh my cauliflower gosh. a bit. Have you always loved to cook? I was always in the kitchen with my grandma and my mom. We were making our family recipes, so it's really about the heritage of that. So I grew up cooking with my mom and my grandma, and for me, I still can't really cook for any less than 10 people at a time, which <laughs> this is really hard for me. leftovers. <laughs> but then I went to culinary school, I went to the Natural Gourmet Institute, I studied nutrition for a while and went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and did that whole thing because, look, I grew up in a family where you know medicine was a big part of it, yeah. a lot of doctors around. <laughs> but I also felt like I got this firsthand experience of food being medicine and food being the first medicine and it being the one that you can control the most because you do it every day. She does approach food with a very nutritious kind of outlook and she has an amazing background. She lost like a crazy amount of weight in college and wrote a book called The Dorm Room Diet. So health is always a part of what she does, but she doesn't want to sacrifice even one little bit of the enjoyment and pleasure of food. That really comes through in the pages of her book. You can be an expert in your own body. You can have this real impact on your long-term health and the right types of food doesn't mean bland and boring and not fun to eat. It right. means feeding the soul as much as the mouth. I'm just gonna grab maybe half a cup of this pasta water with all its beautiful salt and starch. Oh, no. I hate when I forget that stuff. I know, you're like, the no. things that make us cry. Oh my gosh, how did I just leave that on the edge of the sink and let it all go down? Right Lob there. a little butter on in there. <laughs> a little butter goes a long way in this dish. Oh my gosh, this Our looks friends. unreal. And then we'll do the little dance. It's the dirty dance with our ricotta, <laughs> which makes it all the more perfect. A little salt right on top. A little extra mint right now. Okay, I truly could not be more excited okay, right now. we're gonna do it. Okay. One, two, three. The ricotta is so good. Fresh ricotta makes a pasta dish for me. And the mint. Who wants orchiata? Mm. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, <mo. laughs> I know. <laughs> That's what you know in Texas. Something's good, dang. <laughs> I like this one. What food would you never eat? I don't need to eat blowfish. Mm. I don't need to eat fish that like, I don't need to eat food that could potentially kill me. Also, my dad eats the fish eyeballs. Mm. Ooh. And that is, that's a tough that one. That actually, if I were being totally honest, I would yeah. never eat a fish eyeball. You're so picky. <laughs> I can't believe you wouldn't eat a fish eyeball. <laughs> okay, are there any kitchen or baking tasks that you really dread or you don't enjoy? 
I hate, and I mean, I really hate washing lettuce. It's just, it's not fun for me. I'm with you. What's your first food memory? Making spaghetti sauce with my mom, we would always take big chunks of bread and dip it into the sauce oh. to taste it. And that smell, it takes me right back to childhood. Oh, I love that. Okay, let's do let's, one more. Yeah, this is fun, come on. I know. Mixing bowl me, let's do it. Ooh, uh -oh. we're getting risque now. Yeah. Have you ever stolen a food? You remember uh, like Hershey's used to make cookies and cream candy bars? Yes. They were white chocolate with, I guess, Oreos or something crushed into them. My sister really, really loved this bar and she got it for Halloween and she obviously like my parents didn't keep stuff like that around the house. I remember her saving it and I, oh, and this no. is so mean, I watched where she put it because oh, she no. was a kid. <laughs> I totally ate it. I don't um, even know if she knows that I ate Is it bad that I still <laughs> steal my kids Halloween candy after they go to bed at night? That's not stealing, that's being a mom. That's exactly. Sure they I'm trying to it. limit their consumption. I I'm, I'm sacrificing myself for the health of my children. So one of my weaknesses is that sometimes I get really focused on work and my to-do lists and I can get kind of bogged down in that stuff. So hanging out with Daphne always serves as the best reminder that it's okay to take off work early and just go have fun. Freewheeling with Camille in Austin. <laughs> oh, you just pulled a U-turn right into a perfect parking space, girl. That's the way we roll around here. <laughs> Texas baby. <laughs> so our cooking session turned into going and getting pedicures together. And then she convinced me that we had time to do a long lunch. We ended up ordering a bottle of rosé. And you know what? I didn't feel one bit guilty about it either. This is Tell so me. fun, by the way. This is so thank you fun. for making this part of my work day. <laughs> I did my first like real digital detox. I disconnected from phone, iPad, and computer completely wow. for 48 hours. Wow. The thing that surprised me was how much more like mentally there I was because I think I hadn't realized that if I looked at an email and maybe I put my phone down, I'm still thinking, thinking about it. it. And so 48 hours without like taking any of that in just really freed up my brain to like own, just be present with who I was with. It's crazy that in this day and age that it sounds like such a, a commitment and a give to, to be away from work for 48 hours. Yeah. People used to get that. It was exactly. called the weekend. I like know. it was called, you know, you I know. I love this book so much. I have cooked so many dishes out of it. It's so doable. This is your third cookbook. Yes. What was the process like writing this one? You know, I write the books I wish I could buy. And look, I'm someone who loves to cook and grew up you know, eating great food, cooking all the time. And I would come home after a long day of work and, and feel a little bit either uninspired or just like it was a, a chore or mm -hmm. it, was making me, it was making me stressed out to have to think about what I was gonna make that the entire family could eat. And uh, I wanted to get back my joy in the kitchen and I wanted to rediscover all the simple and easy ways you can make every meal feel like a celebration. Mm -hmm. and Love that. that was really the inspiration for The Happy Cook, 125 recipes for eating every day like it's the weekend. Okay, so last weekend, my in-laws were coming over for dinner. They <laughs> love good food, but I wanted to make something that felt like fun and like a celebration, but I also kind of wanted to lay out by the pool and read a book <laughs> and enjoy my Sunday without cooking all day. Yes. So I tried for the first time ever yes. your sticky, spicy baby back ribs. Did you like them? Oh my gosh, they were so good and it was my first time making ribs. I'd always been kind of intimidated. My father-in-law said, these are a home run. <laughs> the result of it feels like you were cooking all day. Exactly. People, people they, you present it to them and they're like, oh my gosh, domestic goddess. off the boat, domestic <laughs> goddess, the whole thing. I love it. Thank you for just sharing all of your inspiration and your recipes so that we can all enjoy. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I, by the way, yeah. this kind of getting your pages dirty, writing your little your little mm -hmm. notes to yourself for next time that I see you have throughout. I want you to get the books dirty. I want yes. them to look lived in and loved and have like cooking oil and like a little like taste mark on it. I love oh, that. I it's love, so fun. Yeah. Speaking of deliciousness, mm -hmm. can I just eat some more of this <laughs> pasta? Yes. Get in it. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank I love you coming so to much cook for with you in your bungalow. This is so fun. I love it. Can we do this? I wish time? we could do it every day. My goal in life is to always love my weekdays as much as I love my weekend. I want to enjoy every single day so much and live in the present and savor the moment. And that's what this book is all about. <laughs>